this is Marlene Rabu from uh, Batam. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sazakau from uh, Vatukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Grove Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic I'm Sein Isakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spade. This is FBC News. Tonight, a bar woman's body found in garbage bag after alleged murder. Man charged after found in possession of $46,000 worth of drugs. And Manohan building owner disputes claim maintains building is still safe occupation. A 26-year-old woman has been hacked to death by her de facto partner after a domestic dispute in Yala Levu Bar. Police Chief of Investigations and Intelligence, ACP Luke Navella, told FBC News the woman's body was found in a garbage bag outside their home yesterday. This is the house in Bar where the horrific murder is believed to have taken place. The victim's mutilated body was found somewhere on this property, ready to be burned in order to hide any evidence of the crime. Police were alerted after the suspect, the de facto partner of the dead woman called a friend, allegedly asking him to help dispose of the victim's remains. Chief of Investigations and Intelligence ACP Luke Navella says the suspect had gone to the hospital to treat burns to his hand, allegedly sustained while trying to burn the victim's body. The alleged suspect is in police custody at the Bar Mission Hospital. ACP Navella says police are treating the case as murder, and awaiting the post-mortem results. Police believe the murder could have occurred any time between Saturday and last night. The suspect is expected to be interrogated and charged tomorrow after he is released from hospital. Razana Nisha, FBC News. A 48-year-old man of Navuso Nausori has been remanded in custody charged with unlawful possession of illicit drugs. The Nausori Magistrates Court was informed today that this is not the first time the accused has been caught with alleged drugs in his possession. Rakesh Charan was produced in the Nausori Magistrates Court today after police seized 57.5 grams of methamphetamine. A raid was conducted at this property in Navuso Nausori on Monday afternoon and uncovered packets of powder and white crystals. Tests conducted have since confirmed the substances to be methamphetamine with an estimated street value of $46,000. Magistrate Chaitanya Lakshman did not accept the two sureties presented in court, one of whom is Charan's mechanic and the other a person Charan trains in his boxing gym. Charan argued in court that the alleged drugs were planted in his home after a break-in. He also asked for leniency, saying that he is the sole breadwinner in his home with a wife and children to provide for. Charan has pending cases from 2014 for allegedly possessing 226.3 grams of methamphetamine, unlawful possession of marijuana, and unlawful possession of 2.3 grams of methamphetamine. The accused will appear in the High Court on May 20th. Engineers who designed the Manohan building in Wainibul and Asinu are adamant that the structure is safe even as investigations by the authorities continue. Principal Engineer Vijay Krishna says all defects identified by the Water Authority of Fiji are non-structural with no significant impact on the building. Kelly Vavala has the details. Engineer Designed has released part of its report saying the Mineral Resources Department is wrong in advising that Manohan building is unsafe. So we've already declared uh, the building is safe for occupation based on our investigation, which was quite a thorough one. We've looked at a lot of uh, all the issues, including the seismicity, the seismology of the thing, the geology of the site, the structural dynamics of the building, the structural adequacy under earthquake attack. So we've done a very comprehensive uh, review. Two weeks after the building was closed off, BJ Krishna says the Water Authority's action to immediately evacuate and close the facility was based on poor, incomplete and unauthoritative structural advice. We see no um, issues with any um, uh, structural uh, problems or any uh, evidence of any um, uh, uh, 
structural integrity issues with the building. Um, we've uh, addressed all the allegations of uh, MRD and uh, Water Authority of Fiji engineers and uh, we could not find any evidence to support them. The Mineral Resources Department also raised the issue of fault lines under the building. But Krishna says even with this taken into account, Manohan building is still stable and there is no issues with its structural integrity. Government agencies are carrying out various tests before deciding whether to reopen the Manohan building. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The construction of a new $3.8 million land transport authority office in Lombasa is expected to start soon. The new complex is designed in a way that will ensure convenient and efficient customer service. Eleanor Tarangai View reports. Two separate fire incidents in 2009 and 2014 destroyed what used to be the Land Transport Authority's administration building and the technical ramp in Watunimbale, Lambasa. Today's ceremony marks the official beginning in the construction of a new and improved LTA office which is valued at an amount of $3.8 million. Today, the groundbreaking ceremony for a new and improved complex was held at the same site. Local Government and Transport Minister Parvin Bala says when completed, the complex will boast new state-of-the-art facilities and equipment. The new technical ramp will be outfitted with a fully automated vehicle inspection system valued at around $700,000. Work on the new complex is expected to start next week and will take 12 to 18 months to complete. The new complex is expected to improve LTA's customer service delivery in Lombasa. We don't want our customers to come to LTA office and wait for hours and hours. We don't want to see that they come in the morning and they go in the afternoon. No. The complex is also an added investment by LTA to its growing operations throughout the country as part of its main focus of keeping our roads safe for all users. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC News. Students of Nabuni Se Primary School in Dawasamu will soon receive new school bags and stationaries after a donation by the staff of the Auditor General's office this morning. Education Minister Dr. Mahindra Reddy says the $1,000 worth of school stationaries and school bags will be sent to the affected school soon. Dr. Reddy says he is pleased that the Auditor General's office had chosen to help a school in the interior, which is normally overlooked by other donor agencies. This uh, assistance that we are providing will ensure that it reaches children of the school and will make a huge difference in terms of their ability to come to school and also um, it will boost their morale <coughs> that there are people out there outside the mainstream education sector who are concerned about the education. Students of Navuni say primary school were severely affected by the cyclone Winston two months ago. Coming up on FBC News, Tropical Cyclone Winston leaves $2 million loss for Fiji Pine Limited. And Workshop looks at keeping illegal trade of arms out of Fiji. Stay with us. I'm Sarah, I'm from Tawa, and I love to listen to Today FM, Today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Ganyatong. I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala. I live in Asinu. Today, FM rocks. My name is Denasa, and I'm from Lutoka, and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Ulamila. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM. It rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. We love listening. Welcome back. This is FBC News. Ensuring Fiji is free from the illegal trade of guns and other weapons is the focus of a three-day workshop held in Suva. Maggie Boyle tells us more. Keeping Fiji and the Pacific safe from the illegal trade of weapons is the cornerstone of discussions here with members of the armed forces and border control. Because it regulates the trade of arms by protecting legitimate arms trade and ensure that the process is not circumvented. It will also improve national regulations on arms transfers with the view to strengthen bilateral and multilateral cooperation amongst UN member states. 
Permanent Secretary for Defence Osir Dawari says these talks will be imperative when strengthening existing national legislation. Representing 19 civil society organisations in the region, the Pacific Small Arms Action Group is co-facilitating the workshop. Two important frameworks that we're bringing here is the UN Program of Action on Small Arms and Light Weapons, which is essentially how to improve stockpiling, marking and tracing of weaponry. And then we're also here to talk more about the Arms Trade Treaty and whether that's beneficial for Fiji to sign on. And it's really important to have the involvement of the defence, the police, the customs, because they're the agencies that are actually going to be implementing it should Fiji sign on. And the Pacific, Tuvalu, Samoa, New Zealand and Australia are the only countries to have ratified the UN Arms Trade Treaty. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Fiji Pine Limited says it has recorded $2 million worth of losses after tropical cyclone Winston. Executive, Ch sorry, Executive Chair Faze Khan is hopeful they can recover through wood chips and logging mature trees that were felled during the cyclone. Madhim Bolaitamano with this report. It does uh, uh, probably, you know... The men at the helm of Fiji Pine's success is confident that despite heavy losses, a company will come through with minimum impact. Most of the plantations that were actually damaged, where the trees snapped, these were mature plantations. So we have it in our plan for 2016 to harvest these plantations uh, and process them either into timber or wood chip. So that's the way we will minimize the losses as much as we can. Khan says damages to younger trees and seedlings covers about 300 hectares of the plantation. The last few months has seen the recovery works roll out to full throttle. About five years old, so it had actually slanted due to the heavy winds. So we had to go through quite a tedious exercise uh, to prop them up. Uh, and to prop the plantations up, you have to individually prop up each tree. So, uh, you know, that exercise finished only last month. Conducive wet weather systems experienced over the past few weeks has also been a good time to resume replanting. For a good period of about 15 years or so, there was very little or no planting uh, done. And uh, that uh, uh, damages your cycle uh, in which, you know, you want your forest to be sustainable. So we have a lot of catching up to do. Despite the crippling blow issued by Winston, and says the future still remains bright for the company. Madhim Boleitamana, FBC News. Understanding the great need for value adding to the tourism industry, a resort in the picturesque Mamanu, the group celebrated its third year of existence by giving back to its most important resource, its workers. This comes as the industry works together in propping Fiji as a prime destination in the region. Madhim Boleitamana again with this report. Tropical Island Resort is a luxurious couple's getaway nestled among the heavyweights of its niche market on Malolo Island. You know, we go to Europe, we go to Asia, we also go out to Australia and New Zealand. Um, you know, the market's tough. It's not just uh, tough within Fiji, it's tough internationally as well. Um, like I said earlier, it's a lot cheaper to go to Bali. Uh, there are a lot of cheaper destinations. So the onus is on us to, you know, to de deliver value. Celebrating its third year of existence, the management of the resort says giving back to the reason their guests returned to the island was on the top of the cards. They come back for the staff. But what we deliver here in Fiji, in uh, Fijian hospitality, and what we seem to be doing pretty well here at Tropica is uh, uh, the genuine care and hospitality that we show our guests. You know, and like I said, that just comes from being Fijian. With Fiji starting to establish itself as a prime destination in the region, the Fijian experience will always be the selling point properties like Tropica will harness to keep the influx of visitors coming to our shores hitting record numbers. Madhim Boleitamana, FBC News. Fijians may be able to travel visa-free to 22 European countries from next year. European Union's head of delegation for the Pacific Ambassador Andrew Jacobs says opening up their borders is an important step towards deepening their Pacific relationship. And Fiji and the, the European Pacific Union earlier this month extended their visa-free travel to seven Pacific countries, namely Kiribati, Palau, Samoa, the Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu and Vanuatu. We have uh, recently signed visa waiver agreements with most uh, Pacific uh, countries. 
uh, which will mean that uh, uh, citizens of these countries will be able to visit uh, the European Union uh, member states which are members of the Schengen Agreement, which means uh, uh, nearly all of them, uh, without having to uh, apply for a visa if they're going for a, a short, uh, for a short time. Jacob says there are plans to include the two bigger Melanesian countries from next year. Fiji and Papua New Guinea are not so far uh, signatories to this agreement. We're working on that. That will come sometime in the future. Uh, our colleagues in Brussels who are working on uh, migration and visa issues rather have their, their hands full at the moment with the, uh, with the migration challenges in Europe, uh, but our intention also is, ex is to extend this visa waiver scheme to, to Fiji in due course. The short-term travel is for a period of up to 90 days and covers all visa categories with the exception of work in the EU. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The country's largest public park and its facilities is slowly taking shape. FBC News visited Albert Park this week and development work is in its final stage. The ground itself is in top condition and the biggest improvement is the new grandstand with the seating capacity of 1,000 people, corporate lounges and VIP rooms. And Jamie is here now with the latest in sports. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening. Coming up in sports tonight... Fiji's Sevens team arrive in France for Paris Sevens. And more matches scheduled for Fiji residents. This and more coming up. A cup final win in the Paris Sevens this weekend will more or less seal the World Seven Series title for the Vodafone Fiji side. Fiji leads the points table by eight points, and a win in France by the Ben Ryan Coat side will create at the least an 11 point gap between them and current number two South Africa. So, if Fiji does win in Paris, they will only need to qualify for the Cup quarterfinals of the London Sevens next week to defend the series title. Fiji is pooled with Wales, Samoa, and Scotland in France at the, Par in the, at the Paris Sevens, and you can watch the tournament live on FBC TV this weekend. A busy international season lies ahead for the Fiji Residents Rugby League side. Fiji National Rugby League today announced the schedule of matches that local-based players will feature in against overseas teams. Talin Daudakadaka reports. Fiji National Rugby League has announced seven matches for the Fiji Residents side this year. For player improvement, we will need a lot of international matches. Uh, we cannot be benchmarking within ourselves. Eh? So that is why we are trying to get as much uh, teams from overseas uh, to play our residents. Uh, this year we have um, about six um, international matches. The residents will take on Australia's Country League, New South Wales, Tonga, Australian 13 and Junior Lions from England sides at home. However, finding a venue for these matches is up in the air. I know that uh, there will be three weeks of uh, matches played by the PNC. Uh, so we are trying to get the best facility, as I've already mentioned, eh? so that we can accommodate um, the two New South Wales Cup and also build you know, the profile of our, um, of our facility here in Suba. With local-based winger Etwa Tenguni Madawa scoring a hat-trick of tries for the Fiji Mbati side against Papua New Guinea last week, FNRL believes there is more talent to be unearthed from the upcoming matches. Seeing the, the quality of our players locally, we can compete with the best in the world, uh, given the right atmosphere, given the right training. It's a major plus for local players to uplift their performance, to match or better their overseas counterparts, thus pushing for selection in the Fiji Bati side and hopefully secure an overseas contract. Tal and Kadaka, FBC Sports. And Tale joins us live now with more on FNRL's plans behind these upcoming matches. Tale. Yes, Jamie, this opens the pathway for local players to prove their worth. The uh, FNRL has uh, scheduled these matches 
to allow the local players to push for selection in the Fiji Mbati side uh, to the Rugby League World Cup in Australia and New Zealand next year. This uh, opens up the pathway for local players to push to, to prove their worth on whether they have what it takes to make it into the international arena. Jamie. Nakatale. The Super Football side is facing some setbacks preparing for its Vodafone Premier League match against Nandi, but is trying its best to get things, get things back to normal as soon as possible ahead of the crucial game. The Super Nandi matchup this Sunday could turn out to be a deciding factor for this year's VPL winner. Rohit Deo tells us more. The Super Football side has been training without eight regular players. Coach Gurjit Singh is hopeful of getting them back on the field before facing off against Nandi. Now we have started training. I think it's very important. Nandi has already played a game. We had a big layoff. But uh, hopefully we do better in this game and uh, try to get all the boys together and build up the team. As you said about under 23, I know they might be tired and all those things. We have to give them some recovery session. Uh, hopefully they turn up so that we can design something for them. Super finished runners up to Nandi in last year's competition and Singh knows the match against the Jet Cyrus will be crucial. All the teams are undefeated. And Nandi had done quite well last week against Rotoka. They played after a long time, but they did well against a motivated Rotoka team. So it will be a tough encounter. The match kicks off at 1 p.m. at Nosori's Ratu the Kambau Park, after which Trevor plays Nandronga at 3 p.m. at the same venue. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Vodafone Fiji under-23 football coach Frank Farina says his players are not unfit. While the majority of the 18 goals his team conceded in the recent Brazil tour were in the second half, Farina says this was an issue of maintaining possession and not fitness. No, no, I think the players, they're fit. But um, like I said, football's a funny game, you know. It's a round ball and when you have the ball, you can play. If you don't have the ball, you're, you're chasing. So fitness is one thing, but if you're not going to be able to keep the ball, it doesn't matter how fit you are. You, you'll concede goals. Meanwhile, 11 players from the under-23 side will join the senior team in preparations for the Oceania Nations Cup. Christchurch's premier hockey competition will get some Fijian flavour this season with Fiji rep Adrian Smith joining the Avon Hockey Club. Finally in sports tonight, West Ham United FC fans farewell their home ground of 112 years in magnificent fashion today with a 3-2 win over Manchester United. Meanwhile at 7am tomorrow, Chelsea plays Liverpool and you can watch that match live on FBC TV. That's it from sports tonight. Good evening. <laughs> The Digicel Group says Fiji is the new frontier for information technology growth. Board Chair Dennis O'Brien was in Fiji yesterday and says our ICT sector is going to attract multinational companies in the immediate future given the framework and policies in place. With this in mind, Digicel Fiji is looking to position itself as a comprehensive data and IT service provider. In the next three to five years, there's going to be a transformation uh, in terms of the number of companies coming here with telemedicine, for example, being a very big area, uh, and other sectors coming you know, in the fintech area to Fiji. So we see that as a great opportunity for uh, Fiji as a country. We want to support that. Generally fine weather prevailed over most parts of the country today. A trough of low pressure remains slow moving over the Solomon Islands and extends southeastwards over Tuvalu, Samoa and northern Cooks. Looking at the temperatures in Nandi, Lautoka, Ba and Lambasa soared to 31 degrees. Savo Savo was on 29 and Suba was slightly cooler on 28 degrees. Tomorrow's forecast is cloudy periods with some showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Elsewhere isolated afternoon or evening showers, moderate seas. And the further outlook, brief showers are to be expected. Recapping the main stories for tonight. A woman's mutilated body has been found in a garbage bag in bar with the de facto partner identified as the main suspect. Now, sorry man charged with illegal drug possession after po police seized methamphetamines from his home. And Manohan building engineers disputes claims and maintains that the building is safe for occupation. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to this week's poll question, and we are asking...
Do you support government's move to remove all credit history stored by Data Bureau? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us by Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Good night. Radio Fiji ki Sundar Sundar Yado ka khazana ek dam bachpan ke din yaad kara deti hain. Hamara naam Johnny Naidu hai. Ham rata hai Maloro mein aur ham taxi driver hai. Ham sab time apan taxi mein radio Fiji ki sunta program. Ham Singatoka ke hai. Hamara naam hai Rosie. Ham wong yahan pe Radio Fiji 2 sunta hai. Ram Ram, main Ram Prasad bolta hu tab hota hu koi rata hu. Main jab hi suna Radio Fiji 2 hi sunta hu. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dharkan.